So my humble embrace and loving greetings to all of you. I'm going to read and I hope that you get some inspirations to share and to enlighten us. Oh, Devi, when will I shyly bow down my head? Oh, no, not bow down. When will I shyly bow my head in the assembly as you are requested by Lalita Devi to lovingly read some beautiful romantic poetry to me? Oh, Devi, when will I shyly bow down my head in the assembly as you are requested by Lalita Devi to lovingly read some beautiful romantic poetry to me? Explanations. In the previous verse, Tulasi learned singing from Swamini. And in this prayer, she wants to learn Rasika poetry from her. Swamini molds Tulasi as she wants. She will serve her Priya tongue through this meat sermon and thus make him happy. And at the same time, she blesses her meat sermon with devotional service. Remotes to Lassi means to Lassi Manjari is very sweet and soft. Otherwise, it cannot be that she will be molded. She is bringing her into the shape of that kind of devotional service that she wants to render to her beloved Mohan through the maid servant. So Tulasi, when she hears that Lalita Devi wants Radhika to read some romantic poetry, Tulasi Devi is a little bit shy because she knows what it means. Because that poetry will be about Swamini's romantic exchange with Mohan. And it is not on any kind of poetry. It is Rasika means it has many levels of, of feelings in it. And these feelings will be servicing or giving service to Mohan. So, Tulasi is like the a channel of expression of love for Swamini, to Mohan. I remember also that Baba has used the expression that the mantras are the mental activities of Swamini. 
any kind of thought, any kind of desire that is rising up in Swamini's heart will be expressed also through her dasis, if needed. And also Lalita Devi knows this, and she is ordering it, because sometimes, maybe, Shemate Radhika even is also shy to express her feelings in front of her especially girlfriends. But in this case, Tulasi is bowing her head, means she is ready to be used. Also. Well, how many molds to Lassie as she wants it. She will serve her Priyata through this maidservant and thus make him happy. And at the same time, she blesses her maidservant with devotional service. I remember also when I joined this movement for Krishna Consciousness, I always was wondering when I read Srila Prabhupada's books, what is the meaning of devotional service? What is the, the mystery about this expression, devotional service? And just this morning also we read something of Srila Prabhupada's uh, Nectar of Devotion. And in that explanation, Srila Prabhupada says, as long as we are not completely absorbed in the transcendental realm, we are under the material nature and in the gunas, but only when we have access to the transcendental realm, means access to the Siddha Deha, then we can speak of devotional service. Or it is devotional service. And also here Baba expresses that Srimati Radhika serves Mohan, her beloved Krishna, through the maidservant. And that is the blessing of devotional sons. So that devotional service happens when the maid servant is fully absorbed in all the feelings that Swamini wants to express through her. And that is the glory of that service, to be the channel of love, to be the tool of love, and to always increase loving feelings. And in Vrindavan Mahimamrita, it says that the maidservants know innumerable arts through the training of their Sri Ishwari. Their mistress. Sri Ishwari is the is the boss. She is the boss of the mantras. Through the tra training of their Swamini, they are so fully empowered. They are fully um, 
concentrated on every little movement and every little word that Swamini is expressing and wants them to express. Because often also, Swamini, she will not express certain things about herself and about her feelings openly. Because she is also shy in front of everyone to express her deepest feelings. Or maybe her deepest uh, desires, how she wants to please Mohan. So she uses the maid servants and they are well trained. The maid servants know innumerable arts through the training of their Sri Ishwari. They also relish the love of the Sakis. The leader of all the Sakis, Lalita Devi, asks Radhika, Saki, O oh friend, read some divine Rasika poetry to Tulasi. Train her just as you like. So we also understand that um, the blessings of uh, Lalita have come because whatever Lalita is ordering, whatever Lalita is expressing, Srimati Radhika will follow that because she is like her eldest and very confidential friend. And so when Tulasi hears that, she is also bowing down her head in happiness and in surrender. She is not saying, oh, no, no, no. Now, sometimes Urdu says to us, oh, you should do this, you should do that. And when we say no, 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 then we fool ourselves. Because also Gurudev is giving us the chance to be molded, to be formed, to be in the shape of how he wants to express devotional service through us. That is also very, very uh, beautiful and sweet meditation. Because like this, the ego is out. It's not what I want. Oh, please, Gurdiv, can you confirm? I have a desire. <laughs> can I do this and that? No, but that is when Gurdiv says, do it. And then we are like a maidservant. We, we let this happen in our lives, even though often we don't know how it will happen. <laughs> Because the disciple is there to, to help the guru serve his guru or their guru in the way that how more to increase devotional service. And not only in Sadakadiya, also especially in Siddhadiya, in our spiritual identity, how to uh, be used by Guru Manjari and all different services that she wants to express, that she wants to please Swamini and Mohan with. So it's the love of Tulasi or let's say the love for Srimati 
Radhika and the love for Lalita Devi, who has this desire, and then because she is so close to Radhika, also Radhika will follow it. Because maybe Radhika would never express these feelings by herself. But so Swamini teaches to Lassi some poetry that she can later, at a proper moment, expertly recite to the Yugala with good poetry. There are many, so many services for which poetry must be learned. For example, Sri Yugala goes rambling in the forest. That is called Vaan Bihar Leela. Not only does the maidservant soften their pathway by strewing flowers, but she also immerses Shyam in a boundless ocean of bliss by singing self-made songs to him about Swamini's glories. So they are walking in the forest, the barn, the Vrindavan, or many vans there are in Vrindavan, many, many different forests with different blooming flowers and different narrow areas and beautiful waterfalls and ponds and green grass and the peacocks are making their sounds, their beautiful sounds and the birds are singing and the maidservant softens their pathway by strewing flowers. You remember that when we were little girls, then sometimes there was a wedding of my auntie or uncle. And then when I was a very little girl, then they pick us to be the flower girls. <laughs> and then we had these little baskets and we had super sweet dresses. The white, you know, white or pink dresses. And then before the, the bride and the bridegroom, they walk into the uh, church. Then we throw the flowers. <laughs> that uh, was a very sweet service. And nowadays I understand why I like it so much. <laughs> <laughs> because it reminds me, it reminded me, actually, oh, you are doing this forever. <laughs> you are doing it in eternity. The strewing of the flowers with that little basket, with that petals that were so soft and also so uh, colorful. And they had this beautiful smell. And then the divine couple are walking through the aisle and are very happy. And when the maidservants come and uh, strew the flowers, then everyone is giving attention to that beautiful pile of soft pebbles where Radha and Mohan are walking. And at the same time, they are immersing Shyam in an boundless ocean of bliss by singing self-made songs to him about Swamini's glories. That is the ultimate beauty of poetry. These are eternal love songs that come from the soul 
to the divine couple. And he is one of them. Oh, Swamini, when you are rambling in the forest, I will glorify you with songs. I will make the path over which you walk soft and fragrant by scattering flowers. And together with your girlfriends, I will shower in all directions at every step. That was the prayer also from Sankalpa Kalpatru. Vishwana Chakravati Thakur's prayers for service. And those of us who are poets, we can also meditate on this service. What would the Mandari say about Swami? Maybe Gurudev and uh, Swamini will give some inspiration. I can write it down, I make a verse. Or another prayer. While your lover decorates you with handmade floral necklaces, sashes, that is the waist uh, belt, armlets, earrings, and crowns, I will again adorn you with flower like self made poems. And I will also make your Rasika Sakis relish that poetry. So also the, the poems themselves are like flowers that are decorating in, in form of words the divine couple's activities. The divine couple's uh, feelings, to increase the feelings, sometimes about Swamini and sometimes about Mohan. And also the Rasika Sakis will relish that poetry. The King Karees. Know the desires on the minds of the Yuga Lakisho, and they serve them accordingly by reading the appropriate Rasika poetry for them. What does it mean? Appropriate means in that moment they feel. What the Yuga Lakishu would rather and Mohan, what kind of feelings they have, and they sing and they recite poetry that will increase the feelings. So, in the same way, also when Lord Chaitanya was in Jagannathpuri in his Gambira cell, he wanted to relish Radha's feelings, Radha Bhav. So Swarup Tamada and Roy Ramananda, they would sing or read poetry at that point to increase the feelings that he wanted to uh, increase in himself, the feelings of Srimati Radhika. So if someone would come, for example, and say, Oh, you are the Lord of the universe, uh, universe. <laughs> <laughs> then he's like, mm, look. <laughs> look. And that Svarup Damada, he was in charge of that. He was the Rasika poetry chief controller. So mm -hmm. why? Because Svarup Damada is Srimati, uh, is a Lalita Saki. Is a natural, uh, let's say, 
<laughs> guard <laughs> for the right feelings in the right moments to increase the sweet romance. So Lord Chaitanya didn't want to hear that he was praised as the supreme controller. <laughs> he wanted to increase his feelings of sweet separation of Vrindavan and how Shimati Radhika loves Mohan. Okay, I'm talking too much because it comes later on. <laughs> You just jump in, any of you, please. <coughs> so we have these two, two uh, leelas here, these two feelings. One is that uh, Swamini is rambling in the forest with Mohan. She is making the path soft, also for the girlfriends and will shower flowers. And the second one is when they are in the kunj. While your lover decorates you with handmade floral necklaces, sashes, armlets, earrings and crowns, I will again adorn you with flower-like self-made poems. And I will also make your Rasika Sakis relish that poetry. Tulasi thinks How many maidservants don't you have? Why are you asking me this in particular? She becomes shy and lowers her head when Swamini calls her to learn beautiful and sweet poetry from her. The more one experiences Swamini's mercy, the more one swarup will awaken. Means that we can feel also how she is shy and how she lowers her head, how she hears Swamini's voice. That is something that also in my heart I may have some feeling of that. Unfortunately, my Swarup is sleeping, being lullabied by external affairs. Even if I could just spend the day thinking I am Sri Radha's maidservant, it could be attained. Baba is giving hope here. Even though my consciousness of a being a Dasi is sleeping and I am like in trance with external feelings. My mind always goes to external things. But Baba says, if I could only spend the day thinking I am Sri Radha's maid servant, it could be attained. It's not that hard. I can try. I can practice. Rade, Rade. Rade. So, Nidi Didi, everything fine in Brindavan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, actually, I was just thinking why poetry is so important. And in this Garwani, Garwani. <laughs> Sorry, late, but happy birthday to you. Yesterday, happy I was happy birthday, 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 birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, 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 bir
Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now Thank you, you so much. Thank you, my dear. Now you can give class now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gurudev, for your blessings and all the devotees for their blessings. Without the blessings of the devotees, we are nothing. So I was just thinking about this topic of the verse, like poetry. Why poetry is so important. So poetry is the language of the soul. Every step is a dance and every word is a song. <laughs> so every word is a song. So because actually how do we express feelings even in the material world? Usually we express our feelings through art. Kalavati is our role model. Radharani is the summum bonum of all arts. So poetry is a language which actually can transfer feelings from one person to another person. And that's why it is so important that Tulsi Devi learns poetry from Swamini. After all, her service, we know, she's Rati Mandari. She is the uh, Swarup, the body, which actually expresses the Rati of Swamini. And her Rati, for her beloved, will be expressed through Tulsi. So it needs the right, uh, how do you say, like, sorry? Tools. tools, yes, the right tools to express it. When you want to paint something, you need some tools to do that, and you need some colors. So poetry is actually like painting on the canvas the feelings. And Tulsi is actually doing that, like it is written here. She is singing about the glories of her Swamini. Why? Because then the bee gets very eager. Otherwise, the bee will not be so eager. He is eager, but not completely eager. So it needs the savor of Tulsi Manjari, of Rati Manjari, to make him more eager. And the right tool for that. In that moment, in the Van Vihara, It is poetry. And she always uses the right tool in the right moment because she's expert to do that. So he, uh, she is inflaming the desires of Mohan to enjoy the savor of his beloved of Radharani. And if a person is really hungry, then 
the food tastes even better. You can serve a person the topmost food, but if the person is not hungry, the enjoyment is not complete. But Radharani wants to make the enjoyment of her beloved complete, and therefore it needs such seva. So the digestion fire is burned up by Rati Mandri. <laughs> and then Mohan gets very hungry. He really wants to taste the nectar of Radharani's seva. And we can see that actually verse 90 is already shortly before 96. So it comes to an end of the seva. And poetry is coming now and songs and playing veena. So it must be a very high seva. It must be a very specific seva. It is actually a very specific erotic seva. It's not a menial seva, like in the beginning. It's a very private one. Mm -hmm. And that's why Ananda Das Babaji is also writing here, the more one experiences Swamini's mercy, the more one Swarup will awaken. The more intimate seva we get, the more our Swarup is awakened. So it's very nice to meditate on that, to go very deep inside and try to get this art of poetry, to transfer feelings from one person to another person. Because how you want to talk about Raga Bhakti? It's not possible like in Aishwarya. Knowledge is acquired for Aishwarya, but feelings and poetry is required to actually transport Raga Bhakti, especially that kind of Raga Bhakti. Rupanuga, we want to follow. Rupa Raghunan. For that, we definitely need that art of transporting feelings. Jai Shri Radhe. Sorry for talking so much. Jai Jai Shri Radhe. How affectionately Swamini calls. Tulsi, won't you read? From now on, you should come every day for learning poetry from me. Swamini has written these poems herself and about herself because Divya Ras, divine flavors, are nowhere else but in her. So she is the source of all transcendental flavors and she is the one that is teaching even more hard these divine flavors. She's teaching to her dasis and she is 
increasing the feelings of Mohan. Like you said, increasing means to have a hunger, to have a greed. And that, and that taste that Mohan gets, he wants to experience even more. That's why he comes as Chaitanya. He wants to go deeper in the worship of Swamini. He wants also he also wants to learn from her like a Dasi. Because these divine flavors are nowhere else but in her. And he is the supreme relisher of these flavors. But he does not know how Srimati Radhika is relishing, how the Dasi is relishing when she is expressing all these very confidential, confidential feelings that Swami has instilled and revealed to her about herself. Because Mohan is a foreigner to this, he is very eager to feel it also from the perspective of the Manjari. And that's why when Lord Chaitanya came in this Kali Yuga, he came to give us also this chance to become a Manjari and to relish the service to the divine couple in that bhav. It's called Bhava Ula Sarati. It's the special gift of Lord Chaitanya. And it's a unique, unique presence. Present. Actually, it comes all from Swamini. Because all the divine flavors are her. Because she is the personification of the all of the rasas that could, you know, even impress and enlighten Mohan. That's why she is called Rasasar. The, she is the container and the origin of all the feelings that will satisfy and please Mohan. Shri Shri Radha Mohan are the divine hero and heroine or the divine lover and beloved. And their pastimes are called Divya Ras, transcendental pastime. There is no poetry as Rasika as this. Means the topmost poetry that any living entity, any poet, any artist, any singer, any songwriter could uh, receive is Rasika poetry. It's that poetry that glorifies and inspires even Radha Mohan. And that's why we also when we sing the prayers to our Guru, Guru Devas, to our Akanda Guru Tattva. It's called Divya Gyan Ride Prakashitu. That all these transcendental uh, subjects, I want and I pray to you, Gurudev, please put them into my heart. Let my heart be open for this and help me to receive it. I want to receive it, but unfortunately, my Swarup is sleeping, being lullabied 
by external affairs. But Gurudev is so merciful that he can see our suffering when we are really eager and he will open the blockages, open the heart and give Dipya Gyan transcendental knowledge. And here, this is the highest form of Dipya Gyan is Dipya Rasa, eternal, transcendental feelings that come directly from Srimati Radhika herself because she is the container, the reservoir of all divine flavors. The authors of the scriptures on transcendental rasa and bhakti rasa consider the rasa which is aimed at in mundane poetry to be the products of materialistic minds and therefore consisting of the three modes of material nature or maya. Srimad Jiva Goswami clearly writes in his Priti Sandarva the happiness gotten from worldly rati or erotic love is only slight and after due consideration ends in misery. The rasa that comes from worldly vibhavas or excitements is not to be cherished. So here we get this hint that even though we might compare we try to compare the love of this world with divine love, it will never be the same because it is temporary and it ends with the senses, with the body, with the mind. So we can understand by this comparison that the rasa, the dipyagyan or the dip, divine rasa, divine flavors, they have a different uh, energy. Swamini uses the names of another hero and heroine in her romantic poems and reads them to her maidservant, to Lassie, knowing her to be her closest confidant, friend. She will not keep anything hidden in them and she feels very happy while revealing these secrets to her maidservant. So Srimati Radhika does not even use her name. She uses also other names of other lover and beloved as to inspire Mohan and to let it be sung by her Dasi. And in this way, she will not keep anything hidden. She will be very open and very uh, emotional. While Sriman Mahaprabhu danced before the cart of Lord Jagannath during the Ratha Yatra at Puri, he sang the verse Ya Kaumara Hara Saeva Hivara from the Kavya Prakash about a mundane hero and heroine. This is recorded or written in Chaitanya Chaitamrita Madhya 13 and Antya. No one else but Svaruk Damara could understand the transcendental meaning of Bhagavad Ras that the Lord found in this verse.
When Sri Madhurupa Goswami heard this verse from the Lord's divine mouth, he understood the Lord's inner bar and revealed it by writing the verse Priya So Yam Krishna. He is my beloved Krishna. When the Lord found this verse on a palm leaf on the roof of Haridas Thakur's dead cottage, he asked Sri Rupa. No one could understand the meaning of my words. How did you know the feelings on my mind? He bestowed great mercy upon Sri Rupa and showed this verse to Swarup Damodar. In amazement, the Lord asked Swarup, How did Rupa know what was on my mind? And Swarup Damodar replied, I know that only someone who has received your grace can know what is on your mind. The Lord said, I am satisfied with him, with Sri Rupa. He embraced Sri Rupa and empowered him completely, saying, He is qualified to understand the confidential rasa. Tell him everything about the glories of these confidential flavors. Radhe, Radhe. Yes, Durban. I think here we have a wonderful picture of how we can actually understand or get the feelings of Mahabhav herself only by her grace. First, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is embracing Rupa Goswami, empowering. Of course, Rupa is Nitya Sita, so he is always Rupa Manjuri. You may think why it has to be done like that. But actually, only by the mercy of Radha, again and again, a Manjuri can take the feelings of Swamini and express them to others, give them to others, share them, like sharing them to Krishna if it is needed in the Seva, to inspire him more. So only by the mercy of Swamini, we can be actually called uh, qualified because the qualification is Swamini's mercy. Without her mercy, there is no qualification. So this example shows it so wonderfully. Only a mandri could understand what was going inside of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's heart. No one else can understand. So, this is the point we can see that actually, without the mercy of other manjuris, Without the mercy of all the mandris, we meet even in Sadaka Deha. We cannot actually get any qualification to feel what Mahabhav in person is feeling. There is no way. So this is the mercy path. And we are so lucky that we have the description of the mandaris, how it works in the connection with the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We are so lucky 
the six Goswamis are the great present from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to us. Jai Shri Radhe. Yes, and I also was feeling that um, I feel the inner bath of my teacher is my duty, is my my goal, is my my cherished uh, desire. Even in my sadhaka deha, I want to feel my Gurudev, my Gurudevi, my Guru Mandari. And uh, and Guru Manjari wants to feel if I feel her. <laughs> it is uh, an exchange of love. Even Lord Chaitanya was so proud of his his rupa. And Swarup Dhamata, who is Lalita, says, "Yes, it's because you give this." It's your gift. You give this feelings. You give this understanding. You give the Divya Rasa. You give these transcendent flavors. And you have chosen your Rupa to express it how you feel. So it was not that Rupa Goswami was. Uh, puffed up or, or, you know, just using, misusing his energy or something. No, he was doing what the Lord wanted him to do, what Srimati Radhika wants. It's like when Rupa Goswami is seeing Chaitanya dancing in front of Lord Jagannath, she sees her Swamini. She feels her Swamini. And because that is her service, she is expressing it and she is glorifying it in her own words, in her own poetry to make, to help also us conditioned souls to enter into these feelings. Uh, we need someone to open up these feelings in my heart, in my mind, so that it can be transcendentally enlightened, my whole existence. Otherwise, the worldly tastes will predominate. Because these divine rasas, they are the antidote to material um, confusion. And uh, by the media of Sri Guru, Sri Mati Radhika is showering mercy on all of us. We're just reading this in uh, Prabhupada's uh, Nectar of Devotion. We found by the mercy of Satyavrata Prabhu some very beautiful quotes where Prabhupada is saying that without being empowered by the pleasure potency by Srimati Radhika, we can never, never, never do any kind of devotional service. So here, this is a beautiful connection between the Gora Lila and Vrindavan Lila. And we we just discussed it also in the classes from yesterday and this morning with Gude, that how important it is that we feel the feelings of our Gurudev, we feel the feelings of our, our Rupa Goswami, our Rupa Manjari, our Rati Manjari, and express, we try to express this according to my own uh, realization, according to my own feelings, because that expressions are my 
uh, uh, endeavor and my my hope to to enter more into these feelings. If I don't express myself, however, um, um, you know, however limited that might be, but trying to express what I have heard, trying to connect to the feelings that I have received, that is uh, a transcendental loving exchange. How did Rupa know what was on my mind? Says Sri Chetan. And then Swarup Damada replied, I know that only someone who has received your grace can know what is on your mind. And then the Lord said, I am satisfied with him. Embraced Sri Rupa and empowered him completely, saying, He is qualified to understand the confidential rasa. Tell him everything about the glories of these confidential flavors. Radhe Radhe. So without understanding that these glories are coming from Radharani, you cannot understand anything. If you think Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna, then you may be completely in question marks. So it's so important, like Suniti said, that you understand the inner mood, the inner mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or the inner mood of your Gurudev, which means you have to understand the Sita Deya. What is the inner mood of Gurudev? We have such an example, like, I know some people who were initiated by Prabhupada, by Narayan Maharaj, by different Acharyas. They have a Siddha there, but these disciples did not get the point. They are actually even proud that they are initiated by Prabhupada or by Narayan Maharaj, but they could not get the inner mood. So what's the use? In the end, they stick in knowledge. They are still in Aishwarya. So then, what is the use? Because they will not get actually really the nectar inside. The present will stay unpacked partially unpacked. So, what Suniti Didi said is so important, that we understand the inner mood. And usually it's very helpful if we see what is actually the mood of the Param Gurudev. Then maybe we can get more hints to understand what is the mood of our Gurudev. Like, why Prabhupada is giving this song, Samsara Dava, singing in the morning? It's leading up. In these texts, it's described, Nikunja Seva. So how can anyone say, oh Prabhupada, he is in Sakya Bhav. Which Sakya is in Nikunja Seva? Why he's giving this song? Who was his guru? In which mood was his guru? So it's very important to come to this point, to really get these feelings, what the person actually wants to tell me. And again, here's the connection to poetry, because they will not say you clearly. They will say in hidden words, true poetry. So Suniti, thank you very much to put up this point. I think it's a so important point actually. Otherwise we will miss the real goal and just go a part of the way
Yes, it is important and it is also encouraged. It is encouraged here by Shila Ananda Das Babaji and even by Lord Chaitanya himself. And Baba says, these Rupa and Tulasis, Tulasi from Braja are here, are there in Gaura Lila. Rupa and Raghunath does. That is why Swamini is so happy to reveal her inner feelings to them. As the teacher is, so is the pupil or the disciple. Mm. Mm. Tulasi learns these poems after a single hearing. How beautiful it is to learn this poetry from her and to recite it. I am your maidservant and you will mold me with your own hands. Yeah. So also these poems that we are reading here now, prayers of, of our Raghunath Das Goswami, are the prayers of Tulsi Manjari, and we also can recite them. We are reading them, we are worshipping them, they are our life. We become closer, we become purified, we become softened and also molded. Shikuru will mold me in the way that he will use me in service to Srimati Radhika, in service to his Guru, to the line of Gurus, the Guru Parampara. How beautiful it is to learn this poetry and to recite it. I am your maidservant and you will mold me with your own hands. It's like I was just thinking like cooking. Yeah, when we do a nice samosa, we first prepare the dough and you know, it has to be as soft as an earlobe. <laughs> and when you make samosas, then you make the, co uh, the filling. But then you have to mold the dough. You have to put the filling and then you make a nice room. It, it must look very nice. No? It must not look crooked. <laughs> it should be like a bowl of, of a nice uh, pattern. And then, and then we put this in Swamini's hand or in Guru Manjari's hand, and she will offer it to Swami. So in the same way, Gurudev also mentioned at these days that now we are molded. We are molded in our sadhaka dehas to connect to the spiritual dimension, to connect to the service, the devotional service that is executed with transcendental senses. We aspire for this, we are practicing for this, we are the sadhakas, we are, we are practicing to become more deeper and to enter into Bhav. And then from Bhav there are different, different levels. And Gurudev said, so when we have our transcendental uh, bodies, then even from that point on there's another training. Different, different levels of trainings are going on and also Gurudev is desiring to check and feel his disciples where they are. Where is their mind, their heart and their feeling? And then he can mold us more. You can come. <laughs> But if the disciple is hiding, is not exchanging, then it's not so not so relishable. Exchange is there. Like uh, uh, Chaitanya was so happy with Rupa Goswami. Uh, Rupa Goswami could have, you know, 
not shared it or not written it down, but he wrote it down and Mahaprabhu, he found the verse on that palm leaf and he was satisfied. He embraced him and he said to his uh, Swarup Damada, give him everything now. <laughs> I see he is ready for it. Give him everything. Give him all the glories of these confidential feelings, confidential poetry, confidential rasa. And thus, Rupa Goswami became the, you know, Bhakti Rasa Chaya. He was always absorbed in these feelings. And although he stayed for a long time in separation, he, in this separation, he received everything, everything from his Swami. <laughs> I am your maid servant, and you will mold me with your own hands. She is well educated in the sciences that Swamini or Srimati has taught her, and thus she will become expert in Rasika services. The relish of devotional services that lead to the blissful meeting of Shri Shri Radha Mohan is their very means of subsistence. Means that what they are relishing, the kind of devotional service that they are practicing is to Glorify the blissful meeting of Radha Mohan, and this at the same time, this glorification is their life, becomes their life. So that is like an exchange of love that is never ending. Because glorifying the Srimati Radhika and her beloved is never ending. And entering into that eternal mm, existence or eternal relish of glorification is our goal, is our feeling, is our desire. And once that is uh, started, so to say, even in the small ways, it will continue. I also had many discussions about this subject through it. Because I was always resistant, because I thought I am so humble, I should not talk, I should not express. But Guruji said, no, no, you have to start at some point. If you don't start, you will never uh, walk. You cannot advance without studying. Like when you want to play harmonium, you have to start somewhere. You are a complete fool, you don't know how it works. But if you don't start, you will not. You will not be better, no? <laughs> We have to. We have to uh, stumble into the science of devotional service by the mercy of our Gurudev, of all our well wishes, and especially by the mercy of Nidai or Amma. So we see also here in this verse, uh, Tulasi is also shy, but she doesn't. <laughs> she is not resisting. She is uh, listening the poetry and she is uh, absorbing. And that's what we do when we are listening, we are absorbing. But not only for our own uh, enjoyment, pleasure or purification, but especially when it comes to devotional service, we absorb it to, to be ready like Tulsi Mandari. At one point, Swamini will use us. At one point, Gurudev will use us. And that's why when we listen to classes, to sharings, and I want to absorb my own heart and mind and the feelings that Gurudev is expressing. 
Otherwise, how can I express uh, what he wants to express to others or to myself or in the Zooms? It is all a circle, a divine circle of uh, learning how to express and learning how to feel deeper the feelings of the maid servant and Shimati Radhika's desires in the end. So I am your maid servant and you will mold me with your own hands. She is well educated in the sciences that Srimati has taught her and thus she will become expert in Rasika services. The relish of devotional services that lead to the blissful meeting of Shishi Radha Mohan is their very means of subsistence. Means they are existing of this. They are made of this desire to bring the divine couple together to assist them in their uh, feelings and increasing the atmosphere according to the circumstances. And in these duties, the use of poetry is required. For example, Virahini Sridhata, when she, Swamini suffers separations from Mohan. Kulasi then goes out to bring Krishna and poetically describes Swamini's sorrow to him, to urge him to quickly come and meet him. Mohan, are you there? Are you here? There is your Priyaji separated from you. That is the maidservant speaking. She is with Swamini. She is suffering separation in that feeling. She goes quickly out to bring Krishna. And then what she describes, she describes how eager Swamini is to meet him and he should come quickly. Oh Madhava, oh Mohan, afflicted Radhika is as if merged in thoughts about you, being afraid of Cupid's arrows, the southern winds that are cooler than sandal would help, and moon winds appear to be as hot as snake poison to her. How much she is suffering, being separated from me. This is from the verse, a verse from Gita Govinda. So first the, the maidservant goes to Mohan and tells her how much Swamini is, is completely going mad in separation. And then Tulasa returns to Swamini and encourages her to go and meet Jam by reciting another poem. Oh, Nitambini, girl with the nice buttocks, don't delay your rendezvous with the Lord of your heart. Wear your most enchanting dress which is the essence of erotic joy. Vanamali, Krishna who wears a garland of forest flowers, dwells in the forest on the bank of the Yamuna, where a gentle breeze blows. There he will massage your big breasts with his restless hands. So here again we have this example. Maid servants are messengers of love. They are singing love song to Swamini 
<laughs> and they are singing also love song to Mohan. According to the circumstances, whether they are in separation or whether they are together or whether there is a confusion or whether there is any kind of circumstance, they will always um, uh, address Radha and Mohan according to what will increase their feelings for each other. Mm. That is a beautiful service, isn't it? Mm. And for that, we need to feel each other. We need to feel Radhika and what she now wants to, you know, us to do. And we are well prepared. We are, we are not ignorant. We are marked. We want to be marked mixers. We want to be you know, fully equipped. We need to we need to be well trained. Otherwise, if we are like standing in front of them, we don't know what to say, then it's really embarrassing. <laughs> we are no uh, speechless Nazis. We are very talkative. <laughs> we are also talking with our eyes and we are making express expressions the works and we always increase the feelings and the excitement of the moment according to the desires of Radha Mohan. The Sakis also teach songs to the maidservants. But the teachings of Swamini are the greatest of all. We can experience that Swamini accepts us through the merciful introduction of Sri Gurudev. When will you make me learn it in Rasika poetry? Also, yesterday we had this nice uh, quote. I think um, a Govardhan Prabhu, he, he sent it also to the Radha Dasya group uh, that when Sri Gurudev is, is introduced in my life, and especially when Sri Gurudev is you know, showing and revealing his heart to us as a maidservant of Sri Radhika, and has also accepted me as maidservant <laughs> under the guidance of Srimati Radhika, then we know we have been accepted through the merciful introduction of Sri Guruji. There is no more doubt about it. And only, please, when will you make me learn it? And Rasika poetry. She Hari Pachila sings. Hey Devi, hey Sri Radha, Mi Braja Mandalete, Lalita, Lalita Sabigai, Lalita Rabrata Mate, Dasi Gana Gana Nate, Angikara Kari Beamai. Oh, Devi, Sri Radhiki. Everyone in Braja Mandala says that you are fondly cherished by Lalita, who accepts me as one of your maidservants. Please keep the selfless girl that I am by a lotus feet, seeing that I lower my head out of shyness. When will you lovingly use sweet words to teach me divine rustic poetry?
Oh, Devi, when will I shyly bow my head in the assembly? As you are requested by Lalita Devi, so lovingly read some beautiful romantic poetry. Anyone would like to share on this more? Please, don't be shy. Rade, rade. There's another wonderful point in this verse, actually. It shows us the position of Lalita Devi connection to us as Manjuri. How we can meditate on the position of her, the relationship to us, and the relationship between us three, Radharani, me, and Lalita Devi. I think this is also a very important point. Maybe, Sudevi, so you want to say more about this also? Ah, Soniti, sorry. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, we know that in our our Vrindavan mantras, also we are chanting Shrimad Lalita's uh, name and prayers. So she is the, the group leader also of Shrimati Radhika's Gan. And she will introduce us and, and, and that will uh, also help us to become more expert. Like Baba said that the Sakis also teach songs to the maid servants. And Gurudev has uh, said a lot of times we are under the care and under the uh, teachings and also orders of the Sakis. Like we know also Lord Chaitanya, when he was experiencing his, his highest Radha Bhavs and he became actually a maidservant and absorbed in the Govardhan Leela, he was picking flowers in he. He uh, saw Radha and Krishna go into a cave at Govardhan, and when the devotees, um, so to say, uh, woke him up from his ecstasy, and then he said, I was just at Govardhan and I saw the divine couple, they were going into a cave, and one Saki ordered me to pick flowers. Hmm? So he was in his full bath of of being a maidservant and picking flowers and uh, yeah we have orders we have um there's also this one verse in Vilap Kushmandali where Shimati Radhika is chastising Tulsi Mandari and then uh Tulsi is crying and crying and crying and then Lalita Saki comes and takes her by the hand and brings her in front of Radhika and asking her to again mm, be happy and be merciful to this maidservant. So we are we are obeying, we are, are listening to all of uh, the girlfriends of Shimati Radhika, especially she, Lalita Devi. She is uh, so close to Shrimati Radhika because she, Shrimati Radhika, she is also listening to her orders. So what to speak out about us <laughs> when Lalita Devi says, you should not give in to Mohan so quickly. You must be more in man now. You cannot give in. <laughs> and sometimes Radhika is also not so happy with this. And she asks, uh, her maidservant also, can you ask Lalita if I can now be out of man again? <laughs> so Shimati Radhika herself is listening to the 
to her girlfriends, like her superiors. She's very humble. Um, but at the same time, the, the maidservants, they always are the messengers and giving um, messenger, messengers according to the situation. And always their desire is to bring divine couple together again. Mm -hmm. And therefore they also sometimes go to Lalita, Saki and say, oh, now the man is, uh, has been very successful. <laughs> Can we have a meeting again? Can we go into the feeling of making them meet again? Like this, the maidservants are always um, very important tools and uh, inspiring all the leelas. And they do so also in a very hidden way. They are messengers that nobody knows uh, who is, you know, what is happening. They, they sometimes go here and there and they try to always bring the divine couple together. And sometimes Krishna is begging at their lotus feet to have a meeting with Shimati Radhika. And then they deliver that. So we know from the mantras from Kama Gayatri, always the maidservant is the half syllable that makes, um, increases the feelings according to the desire of the divine couple and how to make Mohan more happy and how to bring them eternally again and again in their uh, blissful meeting. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Hey, may I say something about glory of uh, Lalita Devi? Please. <laughs> so, just my small experience. Actually, I was a little bit surprised when I had received uh, these Diksha mantras uh, from Gurudev. I was surprised by his, by his uh, Lalita Devi is present these mantras because uh, she is not manjari actually is uh, in a saki mood but gurudev after that has explained that uh, she is very important uh, uh, for the service they arrange so many things and after this uh, during the chanting uh, uh, by my experience i realized actually that all these persons, all these devotees, these Siddha Bhaktas, are always present uh, uh, beside us. They are always pre present uh, when we invoke their names, actually, even Lalita Devi. They are always uh, uh, near to us with open, uh, out with the open palms, actually and ready to receive our love and transfer it to Radhika. There is a strong connection, uh, this, uh, uh, these persons, uh, which we offer the prayers to them daily, and we have to offer with a, a, a very careful and very emotional way to try to connect with them and uh, increase our connection to Radhika. It's not, it's not accidentally really that they are present here and uh, there is a mm, big secret actually in these names, in these mantras and we have to daily, by daily chanting, try to, uh, to discover this, uh, this love which is present in their names, in their present and uh, try to approach Radhika through them and uh, show the gratefulness that we have them in our life in these mantras which uh, we received through bonafide uh, spiritual master and uh, uh, accept it in very serious way and uh, try to relate with them with lalita and others in a very careful respect and emotional way so 
sorry if I said something wrong, it's just my small experience. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my dear Radha Kripa Kadaj. This is so beautiful what you express and please always bless us with your feelings and your realizations. All my realizations come from your mercy, actually. <laughs> you are saying you're here. I have so many uh, experience in your service to Radhika. And by your emotion and your mercy, I can feel something and realize and say something, actually. So thank you very much. By your, by your energy here, by your love, by your words, I am able to say something. So thank you. All of you, actually, that is You are so sweet. Thank you for your sweetness and your kindness and all your loving ears. Gurudev is very um, in the seva of many uh, family members who have come now to give their respects and their love and well wishing uh, feelings to our family who are, are missing and glorifying our dear Mataji. Many family members are coming now. And the next day, tomorrow, will be a great uh, gathering in the honor of our dear Mataji. Radha, Radha, Radha Kripa Kataksha. You always inspire so much. Thank you for that. Your feelings. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to say it's like a, like a big orchestra. It needs to have some person, uh, what is called the dirigent, huh? with the stick in the hand. is doing, this is actually like Lalita. Because we know that all the Sakis are expansions of Radharani, different um, aspects of her. But it needs also a person who is actually dirigenting the whole orchestra nicely for the enjoyment of Krishna. So that every tone, every little aspect is perfectly presented in the right time, in the right mood. And actually, like this, they are all playing together. And we, the mandaris, are also part of that. So if we see it like this, as a base, I think then it's very easy to follow Radha Kripa Kataksha's words to very carefully and very emotionally connect with them all. Thank you very much. Rade, rade.
I have one question for you, dear Goravani. You express this in very poetic way, actually. Do you have some poem, to write poem in your pocket to show us? <laughs> Do you write something, maybe? I, actually, I, I wrote in the past, I wrote poetry, but nowadays not. Maybe it's just because of the time, but sometimes I'm spinning around in poetry, and but just for me, I think it's uh, it, it it's the mercy of of Nitai of uh, Guru Manjari that you can actually express it in officially. So. You have this mercy, I have another kind of mercy, so let's see what will happen in the future, but uh, not now. <laughs> but I love your poetry, so maybe you have something for us. Yes, please, if you want to share. Mm -hmm. I have one new, I just read it for Radhika and sent it to Gurudev, actually. In English, it's not perfect translation, but if you like it. But, uh, uh, okay. What are you expecting of you, really? When you are ready, some sentences for you, it's for that I should only read the poetry here. There are so many of you with such a beautiful emotion, you know, it's a, just... Uh, I was also shy, but they uh, pushed me to read like, like uh, now, so please understand it like our desire that you read something, please, of your poems, what you read, right? So I don't know, is there enough time for this poem? The post will take five or six minutes or something, I don't know. We will take the time. Just one second, please, just to open it, need uh, some seconds. Okay. So the name of this poem is uh, The Call of the Manjari. O oh Krishna, Krishna, do you hear the gentle call from the chests of Kinkari as they look for you in the grooves of Raja? Do you hear those sweet names which are the life and soul of all Vrinda? Because when we call you, we say name of our Swamini, then we know you will surely come. O oh Krishna, Krishna, it is heard from many lips, but do you run after everyone who says your name? That's why we sing Rade, Rade, because we know then you won't hesitate. Love is woven into that name, and whoever writes it on their chests in hers forever. O oh, Mohan, Mohan, follow us. We know the way, the way to her. We know all the paths 
her ankle bells have gone. Every blade of grass vibrates with that sound. Every tree spread its branches to embrace her. In every breath of the breeze is the fragrance of Radha's braids. Water your ears with that magical sound. Paint face with a yellowish glow from her skin with which the branches sparkle. Get drunk on the scent of her hair and go move towards her. O oh, Govinda, is there a more beautiful gift for our Swamini than your ruddy palms on her lovely cheeks? So come with us, we know the way. O oh, dear Krishna, do you see our Sukumari, how the moonlight ripples on her skin? Do you see the glitter of stars on her eyelids? Do you hear those gentle sounds that get louder the closer you are to her? It is music from the palms of your beloved. They are instrument on which her longing plays in the fifth note. They call out your name to embrace you. It is the melody of the heart that trembles in anticipation. Have you heard tones more beautiful? We know you are drunk, but we are with you. We know the way. We call you with Radha's love as you step towards her. We know all the parts to the endless sea in those azure eyes in which you will drown. We know all the secrets of, our, of the heart of our Subangi, and you are the greatest of all. Those who taste her breath away whenever she embraces you in her thoughts. And that secret is glimpsed by those who cover themselves with the dust of Rindala. Then again, no one knows her better than us. All your kisses are locked in our chest and we have lost the key. But anyone to whom the glitter of the altar from her feet sparkles in the dust, and whoever sets his heart on them can find that key. So, Vamsi Dari, mischievous boy, bring your Vamsi to your lips. Let that melody meet the music from her palms. Then you also extend your hands to our Sumuki. Oh, dear friend who reads these verses, if you didn't lay your heart in that purple glow in the dust of Raja, you live in vain. Become the invisible thread that connects the outstretched fingers of Yugal Kishore and taste the happiness in their eyes when their palms meet. Breath only for that, live for that meeting only. Beyond that, it's all rambling. Therefore, listen up. Look for the divine couple in the call of the Manjaris that whispers to Govinda. Follow us. Oh, come with us. We know the way to her. So thank you very much. This is a song for Radhika and for your pleasure. Thank you so much, Radha Kripa Kataksha. Wonderful. Thank you.
this was just the topping, you know, of the on the cake, like the cherry on <laughs> sweet cherry. Thank you. And thank you that you show you your vulnerability. Yeah. And um that you dare, that you um that you are not hiding. And this is helping us. We learn from you also to show other our feelings and not to hide. And also Guru Dev said to us, it's so important that we learn from each other, that we inspire each other because we are helping. And I'm also shy to express my feelings because I think I'm not qualified to ask the right questions or to share any feelings or realization. But all of you, you are helping me. So I open up. Then perhaps somebody else inspired is inspired and also can open up. So we are like you know, the chain. Also, Gurudev was talking a lot of our parampara. And so we are continuing the parampara from Gurudev by sharing and being together and helping each other. And this is his greatest wish that we continue this Radha Dashyam forever. <laughs> that it goes on. Even if one day he will not be in this material body, but he will be always with us. Like he always feels his Gurudev, our Param Gurudev. And he always says that we are all expansion of Param Gurudev and that Param Gurudev is talking through all of us and teaching him through us. So, yeah, this treasure that we can continue this, what he gave us. Radhe, Radhe, Radha Kripa Kataksha. Thank you so much. You are sharing your smarana with us, actually. This is wonderful. Thank you so much. It's so sweet 